Okay, um, today I'd like to introduce our software package for the analysis of large complex networks. We've been working on this code base for basically the last year and a half and we think it has now evolved to a point where we uh, can make it more public, open up the project um, and let it loose on actual data and actual applications and hopefully this code can help to make the analysis of large network data sets faster and maybe more convenient. But first of all, um, let me motivate uh, what kind of data sets we are talking about. Uh, complex networks um, are obviously data sets that can be modeled as graphs, but they have certain non-trivial topological features uh, which set them apart from simple networks such as uh, random graphs or lattices. And these features often appear if we try to model real-world phenomena as graphs, for example, social networks or hyperlink web graphs or in the internet topology or in biology the interactions of proteins in an organism or the neural network of an organism and many other domains. And when we do this, modeling real-world phenomena as complex networks, it's quite easy to get into the category of big data and produce large graphs. Just as a small size comparison here, uh, when sociologists first started to analyze social networks, uh, we were talking about tens of individuals and their friendships. Uh, biologists have apparently mapped the entire neural network of a certain worm species here. This is already 2,000 edges in the same order of magnitude as the United States power grid. Um, if you look at internet topology on the scale of autonomous systems, uh, there we have about 20,000 edges. Um, the sum of all of the interactions of proteins in the human body are estimated at about 600,000. Collaborations in computer science over the last decades, uh, there are a million. Mm, then uh, it gets even larger, Wikipedia links, uh, Twitter followers, already in the range of a billion relations. More than 80 billion Facebook friendships and uh, we don't, we're not entirely sure about the other social graph, but we're pretty sure that the former is a subgraph of the larger. Okay, and if we, we can also imagine that in the future it will be possible to map even larger phenomena to graphs. For example, the human brain on the scale of neurons and all their connections would give us a complex network of uh, 10 to the power of 14 edges, but we are not there technologically. So just as, an, uh, as a few examples um, that make clear how relevant these data sets are, scientifically, economically, maybe even politically today. And around the study of these kind of data sets, there's a new field evolving which calls itself network science. Maybe it's a bit uh, of a diffuse term. Um, therefore, our colleague Ulrich Brandes has once called it the statistics of relational data. And if we want to do the statistics of relational data, then the work we perform is often very exploratory in nature. So we take such a data set, try to apply some algorithms, statistics, try to extract interesting features and look what's coming up. Um, before we can do this, we often need to process raw data into the form of graphs. And in this way, we can easily create large graphs. And after we are done with the an analysis part, we often need to um, post-process the results we get and apply domain-specific knowledge to interpret them. So what is the role of us as computer scientists or algorithm engineers specifically in this process? So obviously we want to support this, this process by providing the right algorithmic tools, algorithms which are fast, which are scalable, which are appropriate. And we need to innovate in terms of algorithms here, but it's also a good thing to 
actually provide usable software because the ultimate test of our algorithms is how they fare when they get into contact with real data. So that this was the main idea behind the Network Kit project. We wanted to create new algorithms, but we wanted also to shorten the path from research to actual applications, and we wanted to <coughs> create a software package which is actually usable rather than a bunch of code which lives until the next paper deadline. So in, in some ways, Network Kit is yet another uh, graph processing framework, but it's a framework with which has a specific set of design goals. First of all, of course, performance. Uh, we want to be able to process very large data sets, and uh, all of our implementations are therefore made with uh, um, efficiency and parallelism in mind. We try to apply parallelism wherever possible. Mm, beyond that, it's also important how the user can interact with the software. And as I mentioned, because the work is so, so exploratory, uh, we don't want to restrict the user to some fixed programs, but we want to provide freely combinable functions. And ideally, we want an interactive interface. And the third point, which was also important to me, was that the tool should not stand in isolation, but it should be usable with other uh, tested tools for scientific computing and data analysis. And this is certainly where the Python language has had a success story in the area of science. The platforms we would like to target are general parallel computers, shared memory parallel computers. Um, this could mean a laptop, a multi-core PC, a multi-core workstation, or a larger uh, parallel compute service. So we're basically restrict restricted by the main memory, but you don't certainly don't need a specialized supercomputer to run this. Uh, so this is Network Kit in a nutshell, a hybrid implementation of C++ and Python. Parallelism implemented using OpenMP, uh, licensed quite liberally under the MIT license. And we are so far up to release 3.1, which is supposed to come out today, hopefully. Mm, a click, uh, quick look at how we we built this. So as a hybrid of C++ and Python, we obviously implement all of the performance critical parts in C++, so all of the fast running algorithms <laughs> and data structures. And then we expose these um, C++ implementations to the Python world. And we do this by uh, using the Cython toolchain. Cython is a compiler which can do a lot of things, but here it's mainly the bridge between C++ and Python. And in the Python world, we uh, wrap this in a nice interface. We have all kinds of additional functionality, which doesn't need to be high performance. And obviously, we can also make use of all of these uh, very useful um, data analysis and scientific computing libraries, which are out there. So now I'd like to go through some of the most important network analysis kernels which we implemented. Starting with something very simple, like the degree distribution of the network. It's simply the distribution of how many neighbors the nodes have. And what we find is that there's typically, in such a complex network, a heavy tail degree distribution. And in some cases, it fo follows strictly a power law with a characteristic exponent gamma. And what we would like to know, obviously, if we get a complex network, is um, how does the degree distribution look? Does it fit the power law? And what is the exponent? And Network Kit can do this for us. And the beauty of um, permissive open source licenses is that we didn't have to implement it ourselves, but we could use this existing power law 
Python module, which gives us exactly the answer. It was developed by Elsa and others. Another property of the node degrees is the uh, degree assortativity. It's a com complicated term for a simple concept. In an assortative network, high degree nodes tend to connect to high degree nodes and low degree nodes tend to connect to low degree nodes and if the network is disassortative then the opposite is the case so this can be expressed as a co correlation coefficient and network hit provides a function for calculating this in linear time and using only constant memory Uh, another important property is the diameter of networks. So uh, just the longest, shortest path that exists in such a network. And surprisingly, it has been observed that most complex networks are so-called small worlds. So the, sh uh, the diameter is surprisingly small. And of course, this can be calculated exactly by solving an all-pairs shortest path problem. And we c you can do this with network kit. But since we target large networks, and this will not be feasible for large networks, um, this is where approximation comes into play. And NetworkKit has a function which gives you an, a lower and upper bound for the, ap for the diameter uh, within a guaranteed error. And this reduces the running time to basically seconds, even for millions of edges. Next concept are connected components. You cer certainly know about this, the maximal subgraphs in which all the nodes are reachable from each other. Usually what emerges is a large um, giant connected component and a few isolated small components. And NetworkKit can calculate this in parallel using a label propagation scheme, which is also accelerated by some multi-level technique. If this is not fine-grained enough, we can uh, look at different subdivisions of the node set, for example, at k-core decomposition. The k-cores of the network, they uh, result from iteratively removing uh, the nodes with degree k, and so we, we get down from the periphery of the network into a core of stronger and stronger connected nodes. And NetworkKit has the standard algorithm for this, uh, which runs in linear time. Another important property are the clustering coefficients. So what, what a clustering coefficient expresses is basically how many of the possible triangles in the network are actually closed. And this can be calculated as an exact value by counting all of the triangles. Um, we accelerated this with a uh, parallel iteration over all the nodes, but still uh, the running time is O of n times d max squared, where d max is the maximum degree. And this will probably be not fast enough for the kind of networks we target. But it turns out that the exact value is often not that interesting. We need to get, get a good approximation quickly. And this is why we implemented the wedge sampling approximation algorithm for uh, clustering coefficients. And again, this reduces the running time uh, to a matter of seconds. I'm what I have in mind here usually is um, the largest data sets which we have in our experimental sets, which are hundreds of millions edges to over a billion edges. Then, of course, we have uh, centrality measures in the set of features. The most prominent example is certainly page rank or a variation of eigenvector centrality, uh, which is a component of Google's search algorithm. Uh, in these centrality measures try to score the importance of a node based on its structural position in the network. And with page rank, a uh, node's centrality is proportional to the centrality of its neighbors. So if we have a web page, then 
if many highly important pages link to my page, my page is probably also important. There is is a parallel implementation of this in Network Kit, and it uses the power iteration technique. The different concept of centrality is betweenness centrality. Uh, for betweenness centrality, we say that a node is important if many shortest paths in the network go through that node. So whatever flows in the network needs to pass through these central nodes, and this is what makes them important. Again, naively, we could cal calculate this by solving all pairs shortest path problem. There is already a faster method, uh, Brandes algorithm, but still, uh, if you look at the running time, there's n times m in there and n squared. For billion edge networks, you don't want to wait on the result. But luckily, we can get a good approximation of these between the scores using a recent a path sampling algorithm. The sampling algorithm gives us a probabilistic guarantee that the scores are, the error of the scores is only an additive constant which you can specify and this is what the running time depends on. And we have created a parallel implementation of this and using this we have managed to um, calculate between the centrality in very large web graphs, hundreds of millions of edges. Okay, um, now to the set of features which started the project basically. We started out with a few community detection algorithms and the task of these algorithms is to find the internally dense and the externally sp and externally sparse subgraphs. The um, task is to uncover the community structure which is present in most of these complex networks. And a frequent way to do this is to maximize the quality index modularity. And this is also the approach we chose and Network Kit has therefore has three, um, well, has a set of parallel community <coughs> detection heuristics, uh, which we tested on very large graphs. So running times are on our machine in the order of minutes, even going up to a billion edges. The first one is certainly the fastest one. It's a label propagation technique. It also scales quite well with the number of processors, but uh, modularity scores are certainly not the best. Therefore. We also implemented this parallel version of the Louvain method, uh, which is still fast and gives us quite high modularity values. And we also added our own variation of this algorithm, which adds, a multi adds some multi-level refinement phases. And this costs some running times, but gives us even better modularity values. Okay, that was a quick tour th through the most important analytics kernels. I should also mention that Network Kit has a collection, a growing collection of graph generators, which come in handy if we need to um, cr create synthetic data sets for experiments uh, of arbitrary scale. And the different generators have different structural features. We have the standard Adashreni random graph model, we have the Barabashi-Albert model, which gives us a power law degree distribution. Then we have the Chung-Lu and Havel-Hakimi model. They uh, can replicate any degree distribution that is given to them in a random graph. And we also have the popular RMAT generator, which gives us certain uh, features of complex networks. Okay, so far the theory, I'd also like to give a small uh, demonstration of how the package can be used. So I'm going to work only locally on my laptop using a very uh, small data set, but um, you will get the basic idea. So, um, what I'm working in here is the IPython notebook, which gives us an 
HTML console to the Python language. It's one of the best inventions since the invention of programming, in my opinion. <laughs> and it allows us to also to plot graphics directly in the session. So as I mentioned, NetworkKit is a Python module, so I can import it like that. And let me get a let me get a small example graph here. So this data set represents PGP keys and the signatures on the keys. So if a user trusts another user, uh, he or she can sign the key of the user. And therefore, what this network represents is kind of a social network and, and a kind of a web of trust. And this data set has been extensively studied. Uh, if you look at the size, 24,000 edges, this is a tiny data set. Um, well, what do we want to find out? Maybe we want to find out about the degree distribution of this data set. And why not plot it directly? Okay, it certainly seems heavy-tailed, and what you usually, usually do here is to plot it on a doubly logarithmic plot. And then if there's a clear linear, sco a linear slope in this plot, um, this is a good indication that there is a power law, a degree power law present. But um, let's not rely on visuals only. Let's look at the power, power law module, what it can do. And the power law model uh, performs a statistical fit of the distribution and says it's true, it's, a, it's most likely a power law uh, distribution. And it also gives us the exponent. Which is 1.69, which is a typical exponent for a co complex network or social network. Okay, um, I talked about clustering coefficients and social networks typically have quite high uh, clustering coefficients because there's a tendency of for the closure of triangles. So a friend of a friend has some likelihood of becoming my friend as well. Um, let's look if what the clustering coefficient is in this graph. So 0 po 0 0.4 is quite high. So this is typically for typical for a social network. And the value was um, determined by sampling. We can also get the exact value for, for a small data set like this. It doesn't matter. And we see the, the approximated value is only slightly off from the exact value. Okay, what else can we do? We can try to perform community detection. Because it's a social network, uh, we expect to find communities, because that's what people tend to do. So by default, this applies the uh, parallel Louvain method on the graph. And we get about uh, 100 communities and modularity value of 0 0.88, which means, OK, it's a quite a distinctive um, modular structure present in this graph. OK, th um, I think you get the idea of how NetworkKit can be used interactively and how workflows can be combined, as ne uh, can be combined from the elements as needed. 
Um, there's also a very convenient function which I always use when I get a new data set. This simply prints, uh, prints out a tabular overview of the most important structural numbers and characteristics. And um, by looking at these profiles of networks, one gets a good idea of what um, structural features are present. So in case you, you use it from the console, it also prints out the degree distribution on the terminal. Okay. Um, then back to the slides. So I've presented some of the features which we have already uh, implemented, but there remain certainly a number of um, opportunities to improve and extend the framework, and therefore I'd like to end on a kind of call for participation. We would like to open up the project to a community of both algorithm developers and, first of all, users who have the actual data. So the first, my first call is for case studies. If you have complex network data in the range of hundreds, hundreds of thousands to a few billions of edges, then you may think about whether a network kit is the appropriate toolkit to study the structure of these data sets. Uh, we would certainly welcome all case studies from all the various uh, application domains and um, can certainly advise on how, how NetworkKit can be used most effectively here. But even if you're not a network scientist per se, not actually studying the data but studying algorithms, you often have complex networks in your experimental data sets. And to say, well, this is a complex network, or to say, okay, this is a social network, this is often not a good characterization of the test data set. Um, often algorithm behavior depends on the structures which are present, and NetworkKit can give you, um, like I show, the profile of the data set. Um, so you can relate your algorithm behavior to the structures which are in your data. Um, and also, if you are developing graph algorithms, um, you may think about whether NetworkKit with the technology stack we developed <coughs> would be the right basis for the implementation. So maybe a uh, really reinvention is not necessary in this case, and you could uh, extend an existing framework with your graph algorithm, or specifically network analysis algorithm. And last but not least, I should mention that we have um, used um, NetworkKit to teach graph algorithms in courses, based computer science courses. And with, with some success, actually some of the implementations I presented were done as student projects. So maybe this is also applicable in your case. To get more information on the software, I would first of all point to the technical report, which is um, already up on archive.org. Um, much more details on the things I told you about. For getting started with the software, there is some package documentation, never perfect, but um, I think enough to get you started. and. You can learn about the usage of the different algorithms from there. There's a readme, there's also a user guide in the form of a notebook, like I showed, uh, which gives some, some usage examples on actual data. And of course, it helps to read the comments and documentation in the code. For any questions on the project, there's this mailing list, and we're happy to answer anything that m might come up. And we will also announce future releases over the mailing list, uh, which we are planning to do several in the coming months. Okay, then what remains is to let the credits roll. Um, thank you to all the contributors who have so far contributed code to the project, both students and colleagues, and I hope that the list will continue to grow. 
and um, in this way, I think we can reap the benefits of open source development of scientific tools, uh, for which this project is also kind of an experiment. So, so that's it. I thank you for your attention.